learn about the most important disease of the mango. We all know that mango, the mangifera indica, is one of the most important fruit crop in India. So generally we will call this particular fruit as the pride fruit of India because of its importance and export potential. And this particular disease, this particular crop is affected by so many plant pathogens like fungi, bacteria, algae and non phenogamic parasites. So these all actually the plant pathogens they are causing considerable losses and impairing its production. So today we are going to learn about the various fungi and other plant pathogens, how they are causing the disease and disease cycle and uh, diagnosis, disease cycle as well as the etiology and the favorable factors or the predisposing factors and finally the management. First we will see the various diseases like the powdery mildew, anthracnose, mango malformation, the dieback, we will also call this particular disease as the twig blight, the sudhi mold. These first five diseases they are caused by the fungi. The bacterial leaf spot is caused by the Pseudomonas species. In this particular crop, red dust is also causing the disease. And finally, the partial stem parasite, the Loranthus, is also causing considerable losses in the mango crop. So first we will see the powdery mildew. So what is powdery? It's a, it's a white, white highline, it's a white color powdery mass containing quinidia and quinidia force. So it is caused by the oidium mangiferae. Oidium is a quinidial state. Mangiferae is the genus name of this particular crop. And the perfect state is the Erisaifi polygony. So generally this particular state is very rare in India. This particular disease has got very wide occurrence. It's worldwide distributed. And in addition to India, it's also reported from Pakistan, Ceylon, South Africa. And in India, so UP, the, the UP and Maharashtra and Karnataka, they will have very high incidence of this particular powdery mildew disease. When it comes to the south, the Maharashtra and Karnataka disease generally we can observe during the cooler months. That is, in between December to March, we can really uh, report can report the disease. So first, we will understand about the diagnosis. So diagnosis is the very important and crucial step for any management practice. As a field officer or any um, uh, scientist, so you have to identify the first disease. So how the disease symptoms appears, how the diagnosis actually we can make. So that is the white or grayish white powdery growth you can observe on the inflorescence and the tender leaves. That means all the aerial parts will be affected with the when covered by this powdery mass containing quinidia and quinidia force. Generally, the powdery mildew. Since it is the airborne disease, the first infection starts at the top and gradually it, it moves towards the basal portion. It covers the floral axis, tender leaves and the stem. All the aerial parts will be affected. The leaves have become the twisted, they will be curved and sometimes they will be defoliated. So the, uh, the, on screen you can really see the infected the leaves of the, the powdery mildew, the white powdery coating on, on the surface of the leaves. In severe cases, the floral parts will be affected with powdery coating. So if the fruits are set, even if they grow, they will not grow to the normal size, but they will become the peanut size and they will drop prematurely. Before attaining the normal size, at peanut state itself, they will be true. So finally, the fruits are sometimes, even if they form, they will be malformed, they will be colorless because of the mildew attack. Because of the very poor fruit set and heavy and uh, flower and fruit drops, the losses due to this particular powdery mildew go as high as 70 to 80 percent. So the, the, the picture on screen really you can observe the intensity, the severity of this particular powdery mildew on the mango crop. So entire big tree will be covered with the, the white powdery mass because of dew uh, and uh, other parameters, the entire the photosynthetic area of the particular crop will be totally affected. So there will be the, there will be decline in the size of the fruit and other I mean, parameters. So what are the favorable conditions to the pathogen to multiply? So this is a very important step. So understanding the favorable factors for the pathogen is important or key step for the management practice. 
generally the disease is favored by warm and humid climate with cooler nights. The pathogen likes to dwell in, in cool nights. So we have to understand the pathology, etiology of this plant pathogen. As I mentioned, Oidium mangifera is a coniodial state, is very common in India. But Erysiphe polygony, the perfect state, the sexual state is not actually available in India. It's very rare. The fungus mycelium is generally it's a branched. It's a hyaline. What is hyaline? Hyaline is nothing but colorless. It's a superficial. It contains septate. It's a septate. There will be septa in between the mycelia. So that's why it is called septate. The hostoria. Even though fungus grows on the superficial layers of the, the host, it produces the hostoria. The hostoria will go inside the tissue and it will absorb all the nutrients, minerals and water from the plant. The conidia are hyaline, they are unicellular, that is single celled and it is elliptical. And they are born singly, uh, sometimes they are born in chains of one or two cells. The conidia four is very simple. Conidia fours are generally erect, they will go straight with two through three basal cells. The disease cycle, this is very important factor. So how the pathogen will complete its life cycle in the host? What is the primary source of inoculum? What is the secondary source of inoculum? We have to understand properly. The conidia in the infected plant debris serves as a primary inoculum. The inborn conidia of the oil mangifera, it serves and it moves from plant to plant and it also serves as a secondary spread and it cause is a source, it's a source for the secondary spread of the pathogen. And finally, we have to understand the thorough knowledge about the complete disease cycle, how the conidia will infect and how it will again it will actually complete its life cycle. First the conidia produced from the mycelial strands, so it will infect the leaf. So on the leaf, after actually uh, harboring on the leaf, it will produce the hostoria, it will go inside and actually it will multiply and it, and it forms the crystallization, the fruiting bodies. We all know that the powdery mildew are they produce different fruiting bodies, that is Clistothesia is one of the important actually fruiting body uh, that belongs to the uh, powdery mildew genera and it will produce the mycelium and it finally it will produce the dormant terminals and finally it affects the blossom and the other leaves. That's how the cycle completes. So how to manage this particular disease? This is very important. So whenever you I mean, find across, come across this particular powdery mildew, you should remember that vegetable sulfur serves as an excellent chemical for the management of powdery mildew. So two preventive sprays at the rate of 0.3%, that is one before the flowers open and second one after the fruit set serves as an excellent remedy for the management of this particular pathogen. Dusting of the same chemical, the fine sulfur, twice or thrice will also check the disease. Keratin or coson at 0.1% before flowering and after fruit set, and that is at the peanut stage also serves the excellent control for the containing the disease. So in India, we have developed several resistant varieties like Neelam, Jaddalu, Bangalore, Torapara, Kurt, and Janardhan Pasan. They are very popular varieties. This Neelam, Bangalore, Bangalore is a very popular variety. So these varieties are they are identified as the resistant varieties. So that's how actually we have to manage this disease. So that's all about that's all about this particular powdery mildew. If you have any queries, you can really go through the reference books as it is mentioned at the end of the lecture. So if you have any queries, you feel free to ask. Thank you.